society and culture. One of the big changes is how we eat our food. In times past, children and families sat and ate together. Then it was more of the norm for children and families to eat together. Now the norm is eating together at fast food chains or even children eating in the backs of cars. In decades past, Eating out was considered a luxury. Most families prepared meals at home. The family sat around the table and ate together. Let's listen to Dr. Wendy Anderson and see what she says about this trend. So 40% of the meals that kids are eating are outside of the home. Well, that's probably kids and adults outside of the home. Uh, we're eating, you know, snacking five times a day. Kids aren't sitting at the table to eat with their families anymore. We're kind of eating wherever we are at any, any given time mm -hmm. you can find a child eating. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so many ch things have changed that have become part of the norm. Mm -hmm. This is normal life for the average American kid. Mm -hmm. So in that, we can see changes that really we can't blame on the individual family or child, but that are just a part of this culture. Trends like these have influenced the way we eat our foods. We have forgotten that the main reason we eat is to nourish our minds, bodies, and spirits. However, many of these trends are not supportive of children's healthy bodies and their minds. But the good news is we can do something about this. According to the Institute of Medicine, children who experience healthy eating behaviors early on in life are more likely to practice healthy eating habits that promote healthy weights. What can we do? Research shows that home cooking is the single most impactful way for families to improve their health. Really, all the recommendations that we use are back to basics ideas. You know, um, sitting down and having meals with your family instead of on the run. Um, having low-fat milk instead of a lot of other options that are out there. Uh, having five fruits and vegetables a day. Cutting back on how much time you're behind the computer or the television. So those kinds of things work. They work for generations, they work now. Let's begin by making sure that we serve our children well-balanced meals. What are the components of a well-balanced meal? There are five components. There is protein foods, dairy, vegetables, fruits, and grains. So let's take a look and see what we can do with these components for a well-balanced meal. Sister soup today. Do you guys know what the three sisters are? What they represent? Well, the first sister is corn, and the second sister is beans. So we're going to use green beans and pinto beans. And then the third sister is butternut squash. And since butternut squash isn't in season right now, you can improvise and use a zucchini or a yellow summer squash in your soup. You can add all kinds of other vegetables, whatever you guys like. Um, fresh corn in season. You can certainly use frozen. You can buy organic. It's even better. But actually frozen is better than canned because canned has a lot of other sodium added to it that you usually can't control. It's, it's also uh, packed really fresh right after they harvest it. They get it off the cob and they flush, flush freeze it. So all the nutrients stay in your in all your vegetables. So frozen is really good for you. And the original 
traditional recipe doesn't call for carrots, but you can add whatever, whatever you like. So what kind of vegetables do you girls like? You like corn? Mm -hmm. Carrot? Broccoli. broccoli. You can add broccoli to this too. It's perfect for broccoli. make a difference today in your child's happiness and in your child's health. Plan meals together, eat together, try new recipes together, and most of all, enjoy this fun opportunity together. <laughs>